Um, yesterday we were talking about heat and today the morning is better than it was yesterday. And that will bring us to the program that we'll be talking about this morning, talking about um, the new minimum wage. What will it actually impact when um, the labor definitely gets to talk about it with the federal government? And I don't have myself alone in the studio. We have discussants that will be um, adding their voices <coughs> to what we'll be talking about this morning. And in the studio, we have Dr. Eman Udekwe, who is a public Udeakwe, who is a public affairs analyst. And also we have Comrade Chikwelu Adigwe, President of Nigerian Union of uh, Local Government Employees, Norge, Anambra State Chapter. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, well, we'll be talking about the minimum wage and the government have been trying to see if they can really get um, the, will I say, the labor to agree on this 200,000 Naira minimum wage. And let me start with you, Comrade Chikwelu Adigwe. Do you think it is feasible based on what we're currently experiencing in this part of the world? Uh, I believe that uh, one of the fundamental questions we should be asking about is, uh, do we really need a minimum wage or have we tackled the fundamental issues that gave rise to inflation in this country? Because I'm an advocate of an improved worker's welfare. One is this, there are certain things that need to be put in place. No matter whatever you give a worker, he or she can go home with it. Even if a worker is being paid 200,000 naira, 1 million naira has been proposed by the Nigerian Labor Congress, the inflation will still consume it. Because, for example, we, we have not had it so bad like this before. Uh, uh, in the past, an average worker lives in government quarters. And from there, they'll be taking deductions. If you need a car loan, the government will pay their own parts. You'll be taking the auto. From there, before you finish your service, you'll be, be an owner of a house. Most of our people that have houses in Enugu and so on and so forth, is all this in <coughs> workers' welfare. We have government schools where your student can be going to and there uh, will be some deduction from your salaries. Okay, let me say for example, uh, um, it's not that those instrumentalities are not in place, still there. But the government has failed to utilize it. Today we have Federal Mortgage Bank who are in charge of Federal Housing Scheme, Federal um, uh, uh, Housing uh, something, uh, Federal Housing something. And, and, and the deduction has still been made from worker salary. What, what, is the, what, what are they looking from the government? It's just for them to provide a land where they can develop uh, buildings for the workers. In Anambra State, for example, if the government can bring out maybe two portions of land in Anambra Central, in the south, the same way, and so on and so forth, engage them. They will use our money to develop it. So you will see that even if you pay a worker 100 naira, 200 naira, and whatever, and so on and so forth, you can manage. So I believe that the main thing we should think about is to tackle the, the fundamental issues that gave rise to inflation. Because if we are talking about minimum wage without addressing the inflation, that means that in the next couple of months, we'll still talk about a review. You understand? Yeah. yeah. So that, that should be the fundamental things we should be looking at. But nobody's looking at that. So like I was talking to some group of press men the other day. I told them that this is not the time to be calculating a kilometer of roads constructed, number of bridges constructed. It's time to open the state treasury and flood the market with food. Because it's only the living that can enjoy the good roads and even the bridges. Every nation can endure everything. But once it's all about hunger, it can turn to revolution. And today, what Nigerian workers part away with as their salary or whatever, it's, not, it's, not, it's nothing to write home about. Looking at some political officials, that are legislatures and so on and so forth, what they cut away every month, despite that whatever they are doing is not commensurate, it's not commensurate to, the, uh, uh, to what workers is, is contributing. So I believe there are a lot of things that need to be addressed before talking about minimum wage. All right. Thank you so much. I will uh, uh, get back to you now. Let's come to you, Dr. Iman Dabe. You said something about uh, uh, tackling the fundamental, the things that actually give right to inflation. Now, that's, that's the important thing to do right now. And um, my question to you is, uh, should we be talking about minimum wage now as a nation? I mean, the increase of minimum wage, especially when it comes to workers, civil servants now. Some people are of the opinion, if you increase the minimum wage of workers, what about those people doing businesses? What are you going to do for them? Because they are still living in this country. Now, this issue of minimum wage, 
are we supposed to be talking about it now or like uh, he said that we should tackle those fundamentals for now i mean those things that get rise rise to inflation for now well thank you very much <clears throat> The welfare and well-being of the people remain the fundamental thing that every government is expected to tackle. And um, let me start by quoting then President-elect Bola Tinubu, May, one, May, May Day 2023, a few days before he got sworn in. <clears throat> he did say, and I quote, in the Nigeria, I shall have the honor and privilege to lead from May 29. Workers will have more than a minimum wage. You will have a living wage to have a decent life and provide for your families. President-elect Bola Tinubu, May Day 2023, few days before he got inaugurated as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He spoke from the heart. He knew what needed to be done, and he made this promise. <clears throat> Fast forward. Today, he is the president. So, where are we? And here he talked about, he didn't talk minimum wage, no. Just like my colleague said, but living wage. A living wage is that we should be able to sustain the Nigerian worker and his family. In the 80s, also then led by Tunde Fatunde and Festus Iyai, had a slogan which they said, my employer is a comedian. My take-home pay hardly takes me home. Where are we today? There's no Nigerian worker. I'm sure the two of you here, your take-home pay can hardly take you to Quata Junction, not talk of taking you home. And yet we have a government. So how then would we expect you to take care of your family? So like my colleague said, it's not about how much you pay the average Nigerian worker. There are certain things that ought to be in place. At the point when we removed the fuel subsidy on the day the, government, the Mr. President took his oath of office, soon after that, some palliatives were put in place, and we were promised that buses were going to be everywhere to run on gas, over 200 of them. So many things were promised. There's going to be affordable health care. There's going to be everything. Where are those things? Because once you provide the basic necessities of life, Whatever you pay the Nigerian worker becomes minimal, becomes a non-issue. But when you don't provide those things, what are we talking about? And like he also said, I want to agree with him again, this is not a time that we should be talking about building flyovers or roads or constructing this or that. The solution we want to see now, the average Nigerian wants to see is that there's food on the table. Once there's hunger, nobody goes to sleep. And when you, when, when there, once there's hunger, anger sets in. And when anger sets in, anarchy looms. So we must be careful where we are going to in this country. What the common man needs now is a living wage that should be able to take, take care of his basic needs. And like you asked me, yes, not everyone is in the organized sector. Yes, that is also where those in the unorganized sector comes in. Because if you provide affordable transport, I do know that when we had those long buses, the Willie buses, the red buses that people were paying 50 naira. It's not only civil servants that were entering that. Everybody, you see families, people would rather, st people would prefer to stand from Monitor to Oka and pay the 50 naira and save money than go to pay 500 or 1,000 on other buses. I am sure again when you provide health where the people can go and assess health care at minimal cost, it's also, it's also not going to be civil servants alone. When we make houses, is, uh, I mean, affordable, when civil servants stay in relations, I mean, we come from the part of the world where we still have this extended family system. Mm -hmm. So if you get a quarter allocated to you, your relations will come join you. We don't really care whether we are 20 in the house, as long as we sleep and wake up. That's who we are. We have a way of taking care of ourselves. So there are basic things the government needs to put in place before we start talking about the minimum wage. Otherwise, even if you pay a, a civil servant one million naira today, it will not be enough. Because by the time that, that civil servant moves from here to Aroma, then to Anita, the money is gone. And I ask, even when the government is not interested in doing all the things that we've rolled out, what should the labor do? 
the organized movement? What should we do? Because we, we can see that we are planning protests, even though the DSS have been threatening that they should not. And we have the vision, the TUC, saying that they are not going to go for the protests, while the LNC still insists they are going for the protests. If the government decides that, well, we are not going to do all this, we know what to do, or we don't even know what to do, but we are not going to do all this, is we've rolled out now. What then would the organized labor do? Because we are talking well, about minimum wage or living wage. Let me tell you the situation we are getting into today. Nobody is immune to what is going on now. Even if you are living on state funds. When we had the SAP riots during the Babangida era, even the policemen and the army men who were sent to quell the riots, at the time had to join the students. In fact, it took one army man who said, sure, even my children, they home or they no go school today. He remembered that his own children, the other one said, even my children no see food chop last night. And before you knew it, they removed their uniform and joined the masses. Everybody is feeling the pain. The way we are going, it will get to a stage where even the big guys in all those mansions, they forget that somebody is manning the gates. The man who drives them, the person who cooks the food, yes, he may, he may eat from the crumb there, but he's got a family back home and they have nothing to eat. He, he or she has got children who are out of school. He or she has got aged parents who cannot afford health care. A day will come, and very soon, where those they, 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 they hire to, to, to probably keep watch over, they will turn those guns on them. When a man is hungry, he becomes an angry fellow, and you cannot control that person. So the sooner those who think they are immune to it, the sooner they begin. It's not even the issue of labor now. There's a limit to what the organized labor can do. It is for all of us. It is for all of us to rise up to say enough is enough. Otherwise, you have a, a government that is insensitive, a government that is not walking the talk. Because it's one thing if the government says, oh, the times are hard, let us all manage, then we know. But not when you say we should tighten our belts and you're losing yours and you're living as if money is not a problem. We are living as if we are still in that era when uh, the oil, 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 oil money is probably there and we are thinking of what to do with it. Leaders must demonstrate leadership by example. They must show the masses, yes, we feel your pains. We're on the same side. Not when you come up and tell us to endure, things will get better. Meanwhile, you're uh, I mean, approving humongous amounts for yourselves doing things, spending money as if it's not a scarce commodity, <laughs> we are sitting on a time bomb. Well, uh, let me get back to you. You said that this is not the time to talk about minimum wage, irrespective of the amount being paid to um, the Nigerian worker, it still won't be enough. So in your own estimate, I mean, in your own opinion, what do you think the government should actually do? Because over the years, with even this inflation that is hitting every person, the worker is the worst hit. Just like you rightly said, Dr. Iman said, your salary is not even enough to take you to a quarter. And yet you don't want to make an improve, improvement in that aspect. Which one is easier to do? Get this minimum wage of 200,000 or whatever, or fix inflation? I want to say something as regards to, with regards to that. Uh, a sincere government uh, that is working for the people should concentrate more on fixing the the root causes of the inflation. Because when you when they were able to fix those root causes of the inflation, the issue of minimum wage will be overtaken by events. Because one, as we are talking about, the workforce is not, we do not even consist up to 40% of the total population of Nigeria, the organized level. So what we do at the organized level is that we provide a platform where Nigeria will come to, 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 to uh, express their feelings. But today's Nigeria, whenever there's organized labor, many people say it's organized labor is the no. But organized labor is just we just provide a platform. Okay, now coming to the the issue of government trying to fix those things. Sincerity is, is one of the first things we did in this country. The okay, let's use the price of cement, for example. We have a lot of people that have the capacity to be producing cement. But you see that they monopolize it. You understand? It was somehow monopolized. Let us, a lot of people are there, they are aware well enough to, to make sure that things are working. Okay, like today, in any state here, we have a, a company that produces ties, owned by Chinese. They came all the way from China to put a company that produces ties. We have a lot of fruits in, in Benue. 
But there's no fruit. They, 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 they come in their juice. There's no juice no cooking in Nigeria. Processing. We still import all those things. So you see that? You see that? What is this? Getting things fixed is the first thing. That should be the first step. Because if we get things fixed, okay, like for example in ABS, we have in ABS, we have a very large vast of land, no staff quarters. So these are fundamentals. Because if actually you have a staff quarters, you are living there, that you are paying small, small, small time, become yours, it will save you the cost of uh, rentage and so on and so forth. Like uh, our, our big daddy said here, the issue of uh, transportation and so on, if it is being provided. So you see that even if they pay you 200,000, 100,000, you can manage it. And that believe, I want to tell us that in a, there's no country in this world that doesn't subsidize one thing or the other. That's why if you move into the shopping mall, every other thing has price tag, but food doesn't have proper price tag in, in advanced nations. So subsidy is not a crime. Because what we are suffering today is just poor government policies in Nigeria. So if actually we must fix some certain things, government has the capacity. The bad uh, government of the uh, army, the military, built refineries. The good democratic government could not maintain it. So where is the sincerity? And we have a refinery that is not working and we remove some first subsidy without putting this in place. And the first thing to do is just to make the refinery working first. So this is the way to reduce the hardship. So an average Nigerian worker needs to go to the market to guess, okay, now for example now, if they pay you one million naira minimum wage, eh, as they are paying us one million minimum wage, the market price is still going up. Do you understand? You have to adjust because such a thing will begin to, to, to if you will notice that even as now, when, when I was employed newly in the system, they were paying me a patri sum. I said, okay, hey, if, if the salary, if they pay me like 20,000 or 30,000, I'll be saving this one and be using my initial one. But I noticed that the more the salary increases, is the more the inflation eats deep. So even if we pay the Nigerian worker 200,000 or 1 million naira today, I want to bet you that in the next couple of months, we we'll begin to cry for another question. All right. Thank you so much for that submission of yours. Dr. Man, let's go back to you. Now, we are talking about, uh, okay, you made mention of living wage that is better than minimum wage. And then, Adi Wade saying... I quoted Mr. President. Yeah, okay, okay. <coughs> Adi, well, so he first, knew. It's better we tackle the problem first. Now, my question all is this. Should we now wait? I mean, the workers, all Nigerians wait. Why the government try to fix the problems in the country or shouldn't we be talking about this minimum wage if they agree to do that yes they agree that and then probably we we'll pray and you know plead with their conscience to also fix some of the causes of inflation what because if we say okay let's wait for the government to fix everything that means we'll still be hungry because it will take time for them to fix the refineries, if it will take time for them to erect houses for uh, the workers and all that. So why don't we talk about the minimum wage for now? Why we now plead with our conscience and wait for them to also fix the causes of this inflation? The issue of wage for the average worker is non-negotiable. Yes. Even in the Bible, he said, I mean, the laborer is desirous of his wages. So that's, that, that is not desire, that is not negotiable. Government ought not, ought not to have waited for us to get to this point. The issue of resolving the minimum wage wahala is something we, ought, we should solve like yesterday. We need people to be alive to have a government. It's as simple as that. So without the people, there's no government. But when you talk about it, there's still something we are subsidizing in this country anyway. We are subsidizing the greed of our leaders. Because that's what, out of office, there are, there are different persons. Once they get in there, they become something else. So this issue, even the government, when they are aware that the 30,000 Naira minimum wage, which came into effect in 2019, will no longer take the people home, the government promised, uh, uh, I mean, comfort support of 35,000 Naira per, for six months, which they never even paid. That's for civil and um, for federal civil That's service. what I'm saying, but it wasn't even paid. So they are still talking about that. That shows you about that insincerity on the part of government. And when we are, why we are talking of even the workers working now, when you receive the case of pensioners, it's pitiable. Some persons receive pension 500 naira a month. There are pensioners who get 1,000 naira. In fact, most of them, 
to receive what, what their pension now each time they have to come from their villages to occur for verification they need to go and borrow money which they will take them six months pension to pay back to pay transport fare so these are things you begin to ask yourself is there something wrong with our leaders and since we remove fuel subsidy within the first one month or two months we were told that we saved over one trillion naira and we'll be saving so much so much so that each state governments now have been getting between 50 and 80 percent much more than they used to receive where is this money because we are talking of the center at the state level the local governments we should start doing something for the people but you see, it is as if our leaders are waiting for the people to die off and then they'll be the ones who in there without the people you there'll be nobody for you to need so the point is that government should start paying workers what is due to them. The money is there. Let's forget this issue. I'm not an economist. But when you look at what our leaders collect to service their greed and the paltry sum it needs to keep the masses going, you'll find out that we can actually afford to keep the people alive while we are doing other things. Do we need to remind anybody that you should have efficient transport system, transportation system? Do we need to remind them that you should have quarters? Now, some of you have to travel from Ekulonga, from Onitsha, from Otuacha, from where to come here this morning. If, like you said, you had quarters here, you simply wake up and you walk into the studio. Some of those of you who have to walk till 10 p.m., I'm sure, end up sleeping on the couch. That's already dehumanizing you as human beings. That shouldn't be. What does it cost to build those quarters? What people collect as an allowance for moving from one point to the other, and can, can, can do all this. When we talk about the wages put together, what you pay the civil, the, 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 the civil service, the public service, it amounts to nothing compared to those billions that come in every month. Thank you. Thank you that for, uh, for your submission. But then I still, I still ask, you said that the money is there to pay. So the problem we are battling now is the will of our leaders yes. to pay that money. So now, as... Um, um, labor employee, what do you think your organization can do in order to pressurize the government in order to live up to its responsibility? Thank you very much. I believe that uh, when our big fellow was saying, he was saying something that the only thing we subsidize in the country is the greed of our leaders. And as a labor leader, we know that most of the countries, even in Africa, like Ghana, they have salaries and wages commission. You don't need to wait for struggle to fix the wages of the workers. As inflation sets in, you begin to make some adjustments. They cannot tell us they don't know what Nigerian workers are suffering. Minimum wage of 30,000 naira cannot even buy a bag of rice. And not all states is even paying the 30,000. Not even all states. Even like in our states, we are not paying. You understand? Because as far as you're not paying the constitutional adjustment, you're not paying the minimum wage. Okay, now let's come to terms. In a situation, where an average worker cannot buy a bag of rice, we are doing a project of 30 billion, 50 billion, 100 billion, and so on and so forth. I was never in one day during the past administration, I was addressing to just a group of people. I told them that bridges are good, flavors are good, but you need to, if people are not alive, who are the people that are going to use those things? So now, the, the organized level in which we are an affiliate as a union, because the government we are being reluctant, they pretend as if they don't know what is happening. That's why we are, we are using every form of action to press on our demands. Hmm. Which is like... Uh, uh, you are uh, meant to be a pressure group in yes. order to get the attention of the government to do their job. Yes. As, but as, it seems you guys are not doing enough. No, you have to, you have to look at, the, at this way. You know that Nigeria is divided along ethnic and religious lines. And it is affecting every sector. You, will, you will even agree with me that the first time Comrade Ajelo called for a, a protest or a strike, that the Southwest backed out. Some people, they just pretended as because they thought, uh, some of them, they'd be saying as an evil man, all these things, and so on and so forth. So now, when you're talking about the issue of pressure group, we have to bring into consideration the issue of divisions among Nigerians. Even as I'm telling you today, when I was in one of the programs, a lawyer was telling me that he saw one and oh, uh, uh, he, he, he saw NLC protesting. It was like, what you, I told him that NLC, provided a platform for you to even join in the protest. So if all the Nigerians will understand that what organized labor can do is just to provide a platform, Nigerian people will, will, will use the platform and, 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 and they express, express their feelings. That's the only thing needed. So one is this. If you look at the way things are going uh, since this year, there have been a lot of level uh, disputes at national level from the issue of the promise of CNG and so on and so forth, protests, strike action and so on and so forth. 
even as that today, my sister said that even that the, the um, NLC declared see, protest, see, but it's yeah. yeah. you know, And the one thing I want to tell you is that hunger knows no boundary. It knows no union. Even if no religion. No religion. No, no tribe. Like, so people that are backing out, they all they just know what their own reasons of backing out. Because in everything you do, there must be sabotage. Do you understand? So what I'm trying to say is that one, as a labor union, all these things they are doing, like protests and so on, is an avenue to 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 to, to get the attention of the government. Mm. All this press program we are doing here and the issue statement and so on and so forth, it goes viral. Do you understand? To get the attention of the government. But the government is sorry to, to get the attention of the government, but it's not yielding the desired result. What do you think your labor Nigerians can do in order to get the attention of the government? I believe that one is uh, during the Good Lord Jonathan era, hmm, the Nigerian Labor Congress called for a protest when there was a fall increase from I think 85 to 1 uh, something ton or thereabouts, 100 or something naira hmm. thereabouts. The likes of our uh, GOs were there, they were leading the protest. The light of our professors, we are there, all of them, we are at the front line. Even more, more, more. most of those in government today. today they are all at the front line. <coughs> so I believe that the, one of the things is this, that when the Labour got the attention <coughs> they refused to do, the opposition party in Nigeria, they are not even playing the, the role of opposition party. Because when this, like this kind of protest, they need to mobilize their members and take over the protest. The only thing is that they, they, are, they are not going to make it to be violent. So you see that... That particular protest in Lagos grounded Nigeria and attracted world attention because of the figures that were involved. Then, Buhari is, is, is not even a member of NLC. Uh, our general over overseers that joined and lead the protest, even the, one of the most uh, influential political statues in Nigeria, they were there. But today, all of them has reneged because one or two of their members are still part of the government. And we are just... So, 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 so you see that, that on the part of the labor, I believe, it's not because I'm a Labour person, but I believe that they are doing that because the only thing Labour can do for Nigeria is to provide a platform. Do you understand? It's just to provide a platform for Nigerians to so come together. So Labour okay. cannot coerce TUC to shut down Nigeria? You have to know that the reason why, you should know the reason why TUC was created at the first place. I do not understand your era. It has to be sabotaging the effort of NLC. But at the long run, uh, at the l l l uh, long run, those things fell off and we started coming together. Okay, so but that doesn't mean that even yeah. in the team, <coughs> okay, so if I'm to understand what is going on, it means that uh, the labor they just they can't really do, do much. much just to provide a platform, like you say, and we come out and protest. And then, well, we let, the no, no, let me put leaders. it in another way that the labor unions we have, the labor organization mirrors the country we have as a whole, okay. And we live in a country where this thumb by thumb mentality mm. has come to affect everything we do. So when it is at the thumb of my people, even if I'm the biggest thief, even if I'm a non-performer, my people say it's our toy, it's our man, it's our own thief. Let's, let's support him, let's keep quiet. I think that is also part of our problem. Because in, 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 in places where the system throws up the best, irrespective of where he or she comes from. You find out that people know suffering is the same, it doesn't have any coloration. When you still, it's the same thing, people condemn it with every fiber in their system without knowing, asking where you come from. But in our country, before people talk, they, they check, is that man from our side of the country? If it is, let's moderate the way we say it. And it's affecting everything we do. So the sooner we go back, to the basics, to begin to allow the best come up in everything we do, to begin to say things the way they are, without bothering about which ox is being good, the better. Today, some persons are hungry, they'll come out and say nice things out, out in the open, they go back and you see them groaning in hunger, simply because it is their man who is there. Who is fooling who? Don't worry, the, the doomsday is very close because the way times are going, Everybody, those who are crying, we hear some people saying that the protests are not happening yeah. in some parts of the country, yeah. southeast and all that. Of course, the southeasters have been suffering for so long, so they are getting used to it. Yeah. But what you find out is that it's, the thing is going around. It will get to a day where, like I told, like I told you, some persons who think they are secure today will come home one day and see their bodyguards turn those guns on them. You see your cook, 
refuse to not, oh, I'm eating with you here. Yeah, what happens to the family I left behind? They're at home. So he's, he's getting to everybody. No matter how, you, how much you think you're paying that cook, by the time he or she removes the clothing of the cook and decides to go home, the transportation from, the, from that mansion to wherever he was, I mean, takes away everything. Then he gets home to see the family he, 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 she left behind. He becomes something else. All right, um, we'll still continue with our discussion right here in the studio this morning, <coughs> but uh, we'll take a short break uh, because there are people uh, we actually interviewed on the street uh, concerning this uh, topic we are discussing this morning. What minimum wage does Nigeria need for its workers at this time? Uh, we get to hear them and also play you some commercial messages. Stay with us. So I'm of your opinion that the uh, civil servant should be taken adequate, adequate care of. This, they are the one working, they are the, they are the government. Because if you didn't take adequate care of them, uh, the civil servant, they have uh, parents at home, they have children at home, they have husband, they have wife, whom they need to take adequate care of. So if you didn't upgrade their, uh, 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 their wage, to their satisfactory. That is when you see a corrupt civil servant. But where the way the government should make sure to minimize the, uh, civil, the, 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 the corruption in civil servants is by appreciating them. Okay, now, a civil servant who is receiving 30,000 Naira in a week, look at what transportation is all about. In a week, he spent, he spent the 30,000 Naira just for transport to come to work. What is left for? What, uh, where, is, where is he going to get money to feed his family? Where is he going to get money to, feed, uh, 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 to pay school fees and pay house rent as well? So this is what I'm uh, talking concerning the civil servants. So the state government should look into it and see how they can upgrade their salary, if at least double of what they are receiving. Thank you. Because I've been in the service for over 20 something years now, so I know how we have the, the previous, uh, 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 not, that, that the wealth, that is the labor union, under so many of them have fought for the for, you know, salary increase. And when they create the salary now, the, the uh, workforce, they will be happy for some time. But the next time, the money goes away through, you know, hiking of the distance. So when you look at the thread of, the government, if government can pay life, that is, I don't, a kind of, a, with the living wage, living wage. If you look at the whole thing now, everything is double. Everything is double in the market. So somebody that's earning 40,000, let them pay the person up to 90 or even 100,000. When you talk about minimum wage, uh, that is the basic pay somebody should receive so that he, he or she can put or can keep body and soul together. So when you talk about minimum wage, well, that is for the civil servants. And that is also for those that operate in the organized private sector because the, the organization can have a minimum wage for them. Uh, but if you ask me about the, um, the, what the minimum wage should be now, then we should make reference to the inflation rates because the minimum wage should be tied to the inflation rate, the rate at which inflation is eroding people's purchasing power, okay? Uh -huh. So that uh, people can, you know, let's take an example with last year, okay? Uh -huh. When we bought a carton of Indomie at 8,600, today it is 12,500 Naira or thereabouts, okay? So people's minimum wage will have to move up so that they can be able to afford that those baskets of commodities they were able to afford sometime last year. There must be an increment because things are not uh, normal as it used to be. At least before, there was a time we were buying fuel, 20 naira. Now you pay government work at 7,000. What is that 7,000? What is he going to do with it? For me to buy uh, 17 liters of fuel, I must buy, uh, uh, spend 12,000. And that will take me for a day or two. So, if you are a government worker, you'll be riding Basco now. Because when you buy two or three times, your money don't finish. Well, uh, the issue of uh, minimum wage, I don't believe in minimum wage. I believe in uh, maybe government 
bringing down the prices of uh, goods. What if you pay the civil servants minimum wage of one million as labor is uh, agitating? What of other people in the streets? So if they can help us bring down the prices of goods, subsidize the ones they can subsidize, it will be better. So that when you pay the civil servant what is uh, better, it will also benefit the common man in the street who is not a civil servant, like the traders. What if you pay the civil servants one million naira? What happened to all these other people? If they want to increase the minimum wage, there's nothing problem about that. But they should also try, help us, and then see the ones they can subsidize. Transform a frown into a smile. Make a lunch hour a happy hour. Change no thanks into yes, please. Provide care when our nearest and dearest needs it most. And resolve family feuds without blowing a whistle. Providing tasty, nourishing family meals is all that matters. The world needs moms because where there are moms, there is hope, happiness, and love. Golden Terra Oil for pure love. Ready for school? Yes! My champs, they use energy at school. I know because imagine the energy they may have used up to return home. This transform every day. Your champs need nourishing energy. Give them the new and improved Mellow at breakfast. It has nutrients that support energy release to help champs get the most out of their active days. Welcome back to the show. Say good morning, Anambra. And we're still talking about what minimum wage does Nigeria need for its work at, at this time. We've listened to the people we interviewed on the street and they said a whole lot. Um, one Ebele uh, Mokoye said something that minimum wage, when we are considering how much Nigerian workers should be paid, that we should be also looking at the inflation rates. I mean, this has been what we are, we've been discussing right here in the studio this morning. Now, I come to you, Comrade Chikolo. Now, talking about uh, looking at our topic actually this morning, what minimum wage does Nigerian workers need at this time? And just like we've uh, already, you know, agreed upon that we should look at inflation and some of the causes of inflation. Ebele also said that if we are considering any amount to be attached to the minimum wage, I mean saying that this is what we are supposed to pay workers, that we should also be looking at the high uh, prices of foodstuff in the market and the transportation and all that. So at this point, as it is right now, uh, before we start looking at how we tackle the factors or things that led to inflation, how much do you think a Nigerian worker deserves now as a monthly allowance or monthly salary? Okay, thank you very much. I want to say something that with regards to what Nigerian workers need now. As a minimum wage is this. When we, we have to look at the dollar rates, dollar increases every minute, every second. Like yesterday, if you go to the market by 12 o'clock, go to the same market by 12.30, the same goods you buy for 1.5 has increased to 2,000. And the, the rate of, uh, the, 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 if you calculate the rate at which increment of goods and services will be made every day, it's not even by 10 naira, it's by 500 or 1,005. So I believe an average worker in Nigeria, if you, if, 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 even if you place them at, at the minimum wage of 2 million naira, it's not even yet enough. Because one is this, if you're talking about 200,000 naira, what is the equivalent of it in dollars today? You understand? Because you, 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 you also agree with me that what we am earning today as a civil servant is even lesser than what I was earning the time I was employed. 
So I'm looking at that. If we are talking about what Nigerian workers need now, with the rate of the way things are, it should not be static. It's something that if we are saying that the Nigerian worker needs, the Nigerian worker needs one million naira now, in the next 30 minutes we can increase it to 1.5 million. Because if you go to the market now and got this phone for 200 naira, you go to the same market in the next 30 minutes, you, you are going to buy it for 300 naira. So if after I'm talking about, I have to uh, go with the the, uh, the 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 Congress president that demanded for one million naira. He said that even the one million naira is not enough. Because those people that are there that are cutting away 16 million, 13 million, 300 million every month, what they are contributing is not even commensurate to what we are doing. So, as it stands now, the minimum wage an average Nigerian worker needs now should not be less than a million naira, from my own perspective. Because one is this that's one million naira, what is its equivalent to dollar today? Dollar, I think, is about 1,009 or 2,000 naira now. 1,850. 1, yes. uh, but if you make call now, they might tell you it's even 2,000 naira by now. So because things keep to adjusting. So that's what I can say for now, but that's what they need for now. <coughs> now, not even for the next second. Okay. Um, Dr. Man, now, if we agree that it's going to be 1 million naira, do you think it's going to be realistic? I mean, the workers, especially those working in the state, because we are still battling that some states can't even pay the 30,000 naira minimum wage. Because most times, when we talk about this minimum wage, some <coughs> state workers will be like, well, why are we even clamoring for it? Because at the end of the day, it's just for the federal workers. What about those people in the state? Well, I think it is wrong to say that some states cannot pay. Let's put it... Okay, I'm not paying. Let's put it correctly. Some, some states refused to pay. Not that they cannot pay. And since we are a signatory to the Sustainable Development Goals, sustainable living entails that the living condition of the average person should be better than it was just the minute before. It should also be improving. So now that our, our currency keeps dancing and changing, we should, that should also reflect in the, what the wages we pay. We should now structure the wages in such a way that what you are paid in January and what you are paid in February should not be the same. The government should make it so that based on the earning power, that they keep also adjusting it until such a time we can get the currency to be stable. So the fact is this, that let our governments do what is right. Everybody deserves to live, including the Nigerian worker and they know it. We can afford to pay, pay them a living wage. When the money is finished, let us know it is finished. But today it is there. Because some persons cannot just be living while others are dying. It is simply not fair. We all go to the same market. Whether you're a political appointee, a civil servant, the salary should be, I mean, rated equally based on the work you do. That is the just, the just, the just way of ensuring that everybody comes out happy. Let us not discountenance happiness because the angry man, I keep saying, is, is, is a time bomb waiting to, to explode. I want to come in. I want to say something in addition to what you said. <clears throat> because you said that some states cannot pay. There's no state in Nigeria that cannot pay that amount. Because second is this. Even some of the states that claim they cannot pay, they were given uh, some funds from the federal government as a bailout fund to pay. But they still embezzled the money. So you see that it's not all about the resources available, it's all about the sincerity of the leaders. And I thank God that even the there is the, the current negotiation of Newman Way that our government is presenting the South East, so we won't have the issue of state paying or state not paying. So the resources are there, the money are there, but they don't want to pay. Now, um, Chippe, before we round up this quickly, this 200,000 naira, is it cut across states or federal? We, we, are, we are not even, we are, we are, uh, the organized level is not even yet proposing 200,000 naira. It's cut across every sector because that's why the composition of this particular minimum wage extends even to the state governors, private sectors and a lot of them. Like Governor Solo is in a number uh, South East. The same thing South South and so on. We have relative there so that they will air their opinion there. Because like uh, our as, as our as our father said that we go to the same markets, we buy the same food, we do a lot of things at the same level. So what the organized is proposing is just a national minimum wage, not the one after your state go back to the state. All right. And yeah. let me also, please, as, as we do this, pensioners should also yes. be factored in so that we don't come back again to begin to, otherwise if you keep them out of it, then there's no hope for you working now only to retire into peanuts.
All right, um, that is where we are going to bring to our end this hey. program. And okay, we can see to pay all pensioners their pensions. All right. Uh, I want to say a very big thank you to both of you for joining us. Do thank you so much, Dr. Imanu Dabe, a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much. And we'll also, survive it. All right. And also, uh, Cambridge uh, Chief Edo Adigwe, thank you so much for being here. This thank morning. you very much. We will conquer. Okay, everybody <laughs> has one positive uh, line or the other. Well, we will survive. Uh, my name is Chidi Moran. I want to say very big thank you to you for joining us on the show this Thursday morning. And I'm Angelo Chukoka. We're saying, well, let's keep having hope, believing that we'll definitely see the better light. Renewed hope, yeah. See you again tomorrow. Bye. Taste.